What's up, everybody? I'm Cody. And I'm Terrence. We're back with another episode of Keeping It Real with River Bend Pentecostals. A little podcast we started. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about a couple things, but just want to talk to you first. It's been a while. Uh, we want to apologize for lack of episodes. Right. We've been doing this about almost three months. Only got three episodes in. Yeah. It's not cool. Uh, no. We apologize. We should be more dedicated to doing this and uh and we will uh, be for now yeah, on for we're, sure we're about to get on top of it uh we've been studying a little bit for today's um topics yep. uh so my brother's gonna pray us in real fast and uh we're just gonna get started if you're ready. lord in the name of jesus god i pray lord that you just have your hand over us in this podcast lord have your hand over anybody that listens and watches, God. I pray, Lord, that we can put something out here, God, that someone can take in and apply it to their life and let it receive in their heart, God, and let us be able to help somebody today, God, whether they listen or watch, whatever the case may be, Lord. Help us to grow. Help them to grow, God. I pray, Lord, that you just anoint our words, anoint your hearts to listen, and just have your will today, God. Have your way in this podcast. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so... I was telling Brother Terrence earlier this week that I felt like we're pretty stiff on here, like we, like we're going pretty, pretty hard, like serious. So I'm, I'm trying really hard to to be relaxed. But when you know all this is going out to anybody to watch it, it's a little nerve wracking. But yes. I'm gonna try to put it away for a minute and just kind of be, try to be in the spirit. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about faith. We chose to do faith because it kind of seems like we did our first video on the testimonies and then we talked about, you know, going through funks, seasons. And then the third one, we kind of still kind of hit funks, but meant for it to be a more positive. But in my mind, it didn't go that way. So today we're going to bring some positivity and uh, faith is a good way to start that. So... Faith, I don't know the, uh, I know the official definition of it is belief in a higher power, but belief. My higher power just happens to be Jesus Christ. And uh, I kind of got it down to, there's all kinds of different ways of faith, but today we're just going to be going over four. The first one being just belief. Uh, having belief, you believe that Jesus is Lord and you live your life for Him, and you should be obedience. Obedience is another one. Uh, trust and love. I'm going to be covering, I did some studying on believe and love. I'm going to be going over that. And Terrence is going to be going over trust and obedience. We've been studying for two hours before we started this right now, so let's see if we, we did all right, I guess. But uh, I guess I'll start it. I'm going in on belief first, and I wrote down that but on have belief, and it says we are coming to the realization of salvation, which is the death, burial, and resurrection. We are starting to believe God. We are starting to believe that there's a higher power. We are starting to believe that there's a new way. And I'm going to give some credit to recovery class last night. It kind of mixes in with it. Uh, it says we make. We made a decision to turn our lives and our wills over to the care of God. So, when I have faith, faith is using... The Bible says that in the Gospels that it only takes a mustard seed of faith to move a mountain. Mm -hmm. So, I'm thinking, I'm trying to break it down. And what I'm getting is faith, the first step of faith, the foundation of faith is making that decision. You hear the term, Jesus take the wheel. I don't want him to take the wheel. I want him to take the keys. I don't even want to start in my ignition. That's and that good. can kind of bounce off into trust because I don't trust myself to even get on the right road. So I'm just going to be like, God, just just drive me. I'll get in the passenger seat. I trust you. Right. But I believe in him. I believe that he's going to have his hand on me. I believe that if I do the right things, that I live the right life, that I give myself to him, then things are going to, prosper things are going to happen for me and and he wants it to happen for us mm -hmm. uh, 
It's so believing. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just believing in God, believing that you have a purpose. Um, I also wrote down that uh, we made a decision to acknowledge that Jesus is God and that we cannot do this life without Him. And also coming to the realization salvation is the foundation of my faith. On the day of Pentecost, Peter's message revealed faith that kind of went throughout the whole world at that time. It kind of let faith be born. And Acts 2.38, everybody knows that scripture, but he talks about his sermon and gives a fiery message from God. And uh, he just kind of let faith be born that day. Because it said, what should we do? And he says, you must repent, be baptized in Jesus' name and receive the Holy Ghost. And, uh, excuse me. We, uh, I feel like that kind of brought faith forward for a lot of people back in that day. Right. And how it's brought faith to people these days. We see people coming in the church, especially now, revival hitting. Oh, we yeah. got people coming in the church that maybe didn't have faith or maybe just didn't know what they believed in at all. They're just kind of wandering out there. Then they come and they hear the truth preached and hear about the Holy Ghost and faith is born here inside this sanctuary. Faith is born when God kind of reaches out to you. I know for me, I didn't necessarily believe in God before I got in church. I didn't know, I don't know what I believed in. I believed in, I don't know, zodiac signs. <laughs> but when something about God kind of felt like he just kind of chased after me and kind of just took a hold of me and I just got consumed with it right. and I started believing and with the belief came all this other stuff all came love mm -hmm. so when I have faith when I became a believer in God then then things started happening and I'm going to go to uh Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, uh, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. So what I'm getting from that is he loved me just as much when I was out there messing up, doing drugs, being a drunk. Just as much. He loved me just as much then as he does now. And his love is like everlasting. You can't, you take the love you have for your kids, your mama, your daddy, your grandma, how much you love them and multiply that by a thousand. That's how much he loves you. Right. And also he, when he created everything, he spoke everything into existence. God, I take this in consideration. He spoke everything into existence by the word that he spoke. Things were created. But when it came to man, he formed us from the dust of the ground and molded us with his hand. and made us in his image if they don't he did that because he loves us if we were supposed we were meant to be different than the beasts of the land and the birds of the air and the things that built in the sea we we're made to be different we we're made to be in his image right and he chose us from the very beginning because he loved us and once we get that in our head this is a powerful revelation on that um i also marked Psalms chapter 37, particularly verse 4, but all of Psalms 37 is, I love all of it. But Psalms 37 verse 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee desires, the desires of thine heart. That hit something for me because I've been a fan of this verse ever since I read it. Because when I have faith, I start believing in God. I want the things that he wants for me, too. That's good. And I want to be able to, like, he wants me, to, if he has a purpose for me, he has a purpose for all of us. Right. Maybe it's to reach people, teach Bible studies, preach, whatever the case may be, have a ministry of some type. And if I'm not putting my heart to what he wants for me, and I get me out of the way, and I'm saying, Lord, I want to do whatever you want me to do. I want my will to line up with yours because I believe in you and I love you. You brought me so far. You changed my life. 
uh, I want to, I want to do be obedient to you. I want to do your will. I want to pray people through. I want to be a servant to you. I want to have a ministry where I can help people and get people to know you and right. to come have faith with me. And he's going to give you the desires of your heart. That just it's kind of hard to put in the words how that really touches me, but it's one of my favorite verses because I found it to be so true in my life. Right. And I came to church, and this guy, you can ask him, I didn't really partake in any socializing with anybody. I came no. with the attitude of, I'm not here to make friends, I'm just here to try to get right. And as time went on, and I believed more, and then I started feeling the love of God that he had for me, and mm -hmm. I started, it starts to mold you and shape you and change you, and I began to love people. I started to try to love people like God loves me and to give that same love that he's blessed me with back to other people. And then, go ahead. And I think that's the love that's going to change the world, too, that we live in. Because if you're really showing love to folks the way God really wants you to show it, they're going to see the concern, like the, not concern, but they're really going to see you truly care. You're truly passionate about what you're doing. You're truly passionate about trying to reach somebody. When you're showing true love, the, the, the same love that Jesus Christ showed everyone, like you're going to reach no matter who it is. It, it might be somebody that you offended a long time ago, but if you show them love and you come to them, you know, open arms, you know, ready to do whatever you can for them, they're going to see that change in you. They're going to see that right. change that, that God put in you. Yeah. yeah. They're like, man, they're going to be like, man, something's different about this guy. Right. You know, about the guy you was talking about, you went down to Wardell and talked to him and everything, and, they, and he was like, man, you, you're not the same Cody no more. Yep. The reason why you're not the same Cody no more is because you found the love that Jesus had for you. Mm -hmm. So now you're reaching out and you're trying to, share that same love right. to, to your buddies now that you used to run around with and yep. everything. And I think that's so great, and that's what we need to do. But uh, And also seeing both sides of it, both sides of the fence. Because mm -hmm. I've been, I'm now the believer who's trying to do the best he can. And I've also been on the other side of the fence, someone who didn't believe and didn't love anybody. I always found it hard to, to love God when I hate myself. Right. But... Uh, also, we just went through some scriptures back there, getting ready for this. Um, some people might take this differently, but I took it as just a sign of love that God has for us. It's Second Corinthians, verse eight through ten, where the Apostle Paul says, "We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed." <clears throat> always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Now Terrence is going to be covering trust. That could do a lot with trust right there. But it also, I mean all of this kind of ties in together anyway. It, it does. But it's for God to say you're going to be persecuted but you're not, I'm not going to forsake you. Right. It's because he loves us. Right. We're going to be troubled. There's so many times that I'm growing in my life where I feel troubled and I seem to keep going through that little phase. Mm -hmm. But I'm learning to get better. I'm learning that I stick with it every day. Even if I don't want to. I, want, I need to get in this Bible. I need right. to do some praying. I need to do some studying. Because God has done so much for me. Letting me live. Letting me breathe the breath that he's breathed into me. I have to put everything I have into him. And that means... Separation, which that's a whole different subject that we're going to get on eventually, but not today. Right. But uh, <laughs> uh, but God's love, man, it's it's set me free, and uh, it's everlasting. It is, man. I read I read this paper in recovery class last night, and uh, I really never got past the first four words. When we made a decision. I know your testimony. I know a couple other people that the Lord's done some 
good work in. At the end of the day, I can only go off of me. And I know when I made a decision, God has completely transformed me, and that's I can't exaggerate it enough how much God has changed me. Right. And uh, I'm just blessed. I'm thankful. I try to make it a habit to pray that I, I love people the same as God loves me. Sometimes that's hard. We're humans. And to know that he forgives us. I know that was something I struggled with first started coming here. It's like, man, I mess up a lot. Mm-hmm. And we get in the mindset that, like, he's not going to forgive us for this one. We right. messed up pretty bad. Yeah. But that Holy Ghost begins to check you on it. But then his word says he's going to take your sins and cast them to the deepest depths of the ocean and forget about them. Mm-hmm. We're the only ones that hang on to it. With that being said, flip on over here to my next one. It's my last one. Uh, Revelation 12, verse 11. We're on the wrong page. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. I'm taking out of that. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They overcame him, him being the enemy, which God also loved us enough to come down to earth, be crucified for our sins, and go conquer death, hell, and the grave. So that's the blood of the Lamb. God was the Lamb. He was the ultimate sacrifice. Right. Okay. But also... And by the word of our testimony, how many times has there been something come at us and it gives us a struggle, gives us a funk like we've been talking about, and we let it get us down, but we forget that the battle was already won. That right. God claimed that victory years ago. Right. That I really, I'm not going to say that, it's not necessarily true, but. Our testimonies is living proof of his love because we wouldn't have those testimonies. He loves us so much, he's disciplined us. He right. loves us so much, he's correcting us. Mm-hmm. He's giving us reproof and correction. He's, right. he's putting a mold on us just like he did the disciples. And our testimony is a victory over the devil. He defeated them years ago, and we're defeating them every day. Every time he lets us overcome something. Every time we go through a little season and then he pulls us out. And then we learn to be thankful and praise him in the valleys and on top of the mountains. Right. God's just so good, man. We, we've we been feeling the Holy Ghost back there. And so much goes through your mind when you're preparing for this. And you really can't even put it into words. You really can't. Everything going through your mind. But I guess that's uh, all I got for believing and just the love of God. Uh, I wrote some other stuff down, but I pretty much went through it all. Just always believe that God loves you. Because He does. I seen a guy I used to work with at an old job yesterday. Started talking to him. And, you know, I told him, God, He can do it. He was talking about a situation. He said, you know, I don't do that God stuff. I said, well, you may not do the God stuff, but God does the you stuff. Right. I mean, hey, that's good. Hey, you can come here. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's all I got, man. But you go ahead and take it. It's yours, bud. All right. Well, while you were sitting here talking and everything, yes, right here has been just jumping out to me. So I guess I'm going to go into trust because I guess that's where God's trying to lead me to. But it says, it's caught my eyes. It said, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he is the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. That's Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. There's a lot there, man. You know, when you talk about trust, there's so much in the Bible that, you know, people really trusted God. You know, trusted in God. Um, one of the ones that I like the most 
is David and Goliath. I mean, you think you take David, he was a he was a boy. He wasn't even a man yet, I don't think. You know, and he went up against the baddest guy around. I mean, you know, Goliath stood like he was a tall man, you know, he was a giant and he was known for his height and his muscles and everything like he was he was the guy to beat you know but you know he he had David had trust David trusted God 100% that if he walked out there to face Goliath he was going to defeat him Goliath was going down there was no doubt in David's mind and the only reason that was is because David had trust God done showed him God led him you know, slay a lion and a bear to re to retrieve a lamb, a sheep that he was supposed to protect. Mm -hmm. He was he was the sheep, like he he protected sheep, like that was his job. Right. You know, some people looked at it as, ah, oh, he's man, you're just a little shepherd boy, man. Go, go on about your business. Yeah. This is this is grown folks over here. You know, you never been in war. It's your bedtime. But, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean, like. None of the guys that was out there when Goliath was like, give me a man, give me a man. None of them was, all of them was afraid. They didn't, I, me personally, I don't think they trusted God enough to go out there and defeat him. But a boy, a boy that was bringing food, food to the army, to Saul, his brothers, bringing them food, he had enough trust in God to walk out there with five stones. Five stones. That's all he had. And a sling. All right. Goliath had, he was big. He had a big sword. He had armor on, all that. You know, Saul tried to give David armor, but he was like, no, I don't need it. it it's too heavy. It's, it's not meant for me. But my thing is with David and Goliath, you could be the David in your life. Goliath can be anything that you stand in your way. Standing in your way. A uh, obstacle. I'll say it like this. Goliath could be a drug problem for you. Goliath could be trying to turn away from sin. Grieving. Uh grieving. Mental you know health, emotional health. Anything. The Goliath in our life is is what we see it. But we we have to be the David. We have to put our trust in God to know, all right, Lord, I thank you for letting me wake up today. Anything that comes my way, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to trust in you that you're going to give me the give me the strength to overcome it. You're going to give me the strength to pursue it the way that you want me to do it. When we trust in God, when we put all our trust in God, sky's the limit. I'll say it. Sky is the limit. If you want to train, if you want to change, you want a true change. Trust in God. When you put your whole trust in God, God's going to change your life, one hundred percent. Um. You know. You can't put a limit on a limitless God. You can't. You can't. Trip. Trip had a shirt on. It says. Can't measure a miracle. I like that. that. That was pretty cool to me. But you can't. He is limitless, man. He he can do all things. He can do all things. Trust in God. Trust when you can't find nothing else to trust in. Trust in God. Yep. You can't go wrong if you trust in God. Um, my next thing is obedience. But the thing that I want to talk about, it goes hand in hand with uh, trust and obedience. Before you go into that, all right. can I read some of that scripture all from, right. from uh, <laughs> go ahead. From old David? Yes, sir. David boy. Uh, so I'm going to read this little scripture. It just, it pumps me up. But <sighs> it's talking about Goliath. And the Philistine came on and drew nearer to David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And the Philistine looked about and saw David 
he disdained him, for he was but a youth, and ruddy, and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. I'm just a kid. You're coming at me with all this heavy yeah. artillery. Well, okay. Check this out, though. Check this out, though. You got all that? But I came to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. And all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Mm. This boy said, I'm going to take him the head off your shoulders. Right. Because he trusted. He trusted in God. He had God. a slingshot. He trusted. Because when, when Goliath was saying, said unto David, Come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the fields. David turned the script on him. He said, That's all right. I come in the Lord. The Lord is with me. The Lord is on my side. I trust in the Lord. So I'm going to take your head and then I'm going to give your carcass to the host. And he declared it in the name of the Lord. And, yeah. With trust. And that, is, that is so good. That, that just shows you when you trust in God. He believed and he trusted. He believed and trusted in God. And, and God let him overcome that obstacle. Yeah. That's... Bro. I was I was undecided if I wanted to read them. I wish I would, but I'm glad mind. I'm glad you did. I knew hey. my mind if you did. Not I, I'm to. glad I'm glad you did. <laughs> that that was really good. That was that was a a good point though, right there. I mean, you know, David he he was still he was still human, so you know his flesh was right. man. You know he he was a little scared. Yeah. You know. I mean, I've, but he still trusted in God to overcome. That fear. And I feel like people have a hard time with trust because, like I was telling you back there, like, I've heard people say, I've even said it, like, I believe you, I love you, but I don't trust you. Right. As humans, as humans we have that problem yeah. trusting people because of all the... Especially if we get done wrong a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, people let us down. People, you know, they, they, they say, you can trust me, and then they stab you in the back. You know, yep. man, God's never going to stab us in the back. Mm -hmm. God's never going to let us down. He's always for us. He's never against us. Right. He'll never forsake us. He'll never leave us. You know, we're his prized possessions. Right. Uh, man, trust in God. Trust in God. You know, this world's telling you you can do all this and that. But all that stuff leaves to vanity. All that stuff just leaves the emptiness. Mm -hmm. But when you come to God, man, there's love. There's peace. There's everything that you need in right. this life. 